Fratelloni's Hardware and Garden Stores brings you Garage Logic Podcast number 1002, January 19th, 2023. 49 degrees on this day in 1921. And 34 degrees on this day, I remember this, 1970. And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the East Shore, I don't of really Spain, remember it. It's Garage <laughs> Logic. <laughs> With Chris know, Reed, Manning Technology Corner, all the time Kenny right Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Hyde in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushir. Look, look up. up the look up the fire chief of St. Paul. It's Butch uh, Weiniger. Is it Butch Inks? Thompson. I need his name. <laughs> Uh, Dean O'Garan, who ran for mayor, called me with a great little story. Butch Inks. Butch Inks. He Como kid, played hockey, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Normal kid. His kid uh, is on the, uh, Butch's kid is on the snow skiing, the skiing team at Como. Hmm. And apparently they have a significant number of kids on that team. They train at Afton, but they haven't been able to get there because Como cannot provide a bus driver. They're short of bus drivers. Sure. Wow. So Butch Inks got into this, fire chief of St. Paul, and okay. he went to the school, and he said, well, what do I need to drive the bus? So, well, you got to have a Class B chauffeur's sure. license or whatever. So Butch went and took the test, passed it, came back to school and said, okay, I'll drive him. Doesn't get paid. Doesn't sure. want any money. And uh, uh, that's just kind of an old school way of settling things, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I thought you were going to say, mm-hmm. and the school said no because of... Right. So yeah. that's okay. That's, that's uh, an example of pushback. Yeah. Positive Thursday. Yeah. Positive Thursday. Nice, nice start, Joe. Thank what else you. you got? Yeah, well, we can. We, well, I do mm-hmm. have something that would be along somewhat old style lines. Let's keep. Because you know what my goal is today. What's that, Joe? Uh, to get out by one thirty so you can write. <laughs> <laughs> no, my, hey, 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 hey! That's not that funny because oh, it's so true. It was spot on. <laughs> No, there are two stories in particular today where I am going to uh, practice some serenity. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to try the calm approach. What's the old saying? You can catch more with sugar than what? What's that? You can catch more more mice with the second cheese. More flies drawn to poop than. Never mind. You get more, get away more with, bees with honey than or something. I don't know. You can pick your friends and you can pick your nose. You know, none you can't of you your keep your enemies closer. You're none of you are any. No, what is no. the what is this phrase? What are you looking for? I can look at it. Can, it's not important. You get more with a spoonful of sugar get more than than being angry or something. From being angry. Okay. Hail the mayor. Hail, Hail, Hail the mayor. I'm a longtime listener raised on AM 1500 as a kid and now an avid listener to the GL podcast as a ray of hope as the dawn of a new tax paid time off is upon us. My 13-year-old niece raised in a leftist home started a new job, working at a horse farm to pay off riding lessons. She worked too many hours over the summer for the employer to not put her on the payroll. After excitedly opening the envelope to see her check, she was shocked. She's a smart kid and put two and two together. Her observation and comment to me and to myself and my husband, her conservative influence was, I'm not saying I'm a Republican, but it's not fair that I have to pay taxes. I'm 13. Mm -hmm. The pushback to the le- uh, the pushback to the left to avoid new taxes is going to be slow, like the little observations my niece makes. Do we have time to wait? But who really has time to rally or protest? We are all too busy working to pay Uncle Sam, who thinks he knows best how to spend our money. A thought has been brewing in my mind since the announcement to spend the surplus. Letters and emails to legislatures is great, but we need a wow factor. What if every like-minded business in the state had a giant poster, we want our money back? We, the people of Minnesota, are too busy working to pay uh, your taxes to make it to the state capitol. Do not trust your constituents to take care of themselves and be generous to our neighbor. Everyone who is like-minded can sign their John Hancock on the poster, and then we deliver it to the state legislature and governor on April 18th, the day taxes are due. Uh, The Republican Party is not invited to participate in this statement. They have shown poor judgment and ineptitude to stand up to the left and convey any sense of unity. Hear, hear. 
I find that particularly true at the national level. These pathetic frauds who appointed Marjorie Taylor Greene to a Homeland Security post, <laughs> right. and they put this lying <laughs> son of a gun, George Santos, on committees. You, you P words, Fools. you P words. Uh, and then this is Christine Sachs who signs this. Will Minnesotans stand up and take a stance? You know, I doubt that that would work. Uh, Why? It would work if we had the, the pockets, if we had the financing. She, she has a no, good all idea. All she wants is a poster. Signs every. Oh, no, I'm taking it to the next level. I right. want yard signs. I want billboards. I want signs in houses. I want bumper stickers. But who's going to pay for well, this? Well, that's a great point. We would need a, we need a head of that. We would need yeah. someone to, to throw that together. Well, let me then continue, let me go right to Serenity. And, and there's one. There's two stories today that, compel in me the wish to remain uh, calm. Well, it's, as long as you said that, it's you get more flies with honey than with vinegar. There's your saying. That's a really stupid thing to that say. That really though. is stupid because who wants flies? <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> That makes no sense. When I Googled. It's just a, a saying. I, I'm aware what it is, John, but it makes no sense. I don't want a fly. <sighs> I don't yeah. want other people around me. When I, what it's an analogy. For when me. I Googled the sentence that you had uttered, you know what the first article that popped up was? Uh, I don't. Seven ways anger is ruining your health. Well, I don't care. Hey, now. <laughs> Nothing I, makes him happier than hate. That's right. <laughs> All right, let's 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 see if I can catch more flies with honey here than vinegar. Okay. Walls is calling for twelve billion dollars, well, presumably from the surplus. Walls is calling for twelve billion dollars in new spending to make Minnesota the best darn state in the country for kids. Hey, hey. this is the budget we've been waiting on. The governor, a former, it says here, a high school teacher. I thought he was only an elementary school teacher. He told educators at a St. Paul elementary school. The governor detailed a big part of his coming budget proposal Tuesday, saying he wants $12 billion. Uh, John, look up what we currently spend on education, please, because okay. this is in addition to. Saying he wants to spend $12 billion in new state funding over the next four years to make Minnesota the best state in the country for kids. That's unmeasurable, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't, what's the, there's no end result on that. Walls' proposal <clears throat> would tap about, oh, he's only going to tap $5.2 billion oh, from it. the state's budget surplus in the next two year budget. For a mix of tax credits and extended programs for families and their kids. So where's the other seven going to come? The from? remaining six point eight billion would come in the following biennium when the state's budget surplus is expected to continue to grow. Oh, isn't that all the more reason then to uh, take a stronger look at how we're being taxed? Mm -hmm. If you continue to think these surpluses are going to grow, this is the budget we've been waiting on. Wall said. This is a transformational moment that can happen. And the $12 billion includes new spending on school programs, universal meals, regardless of your parents' income. I understand why you do that. What I don't understand is why the government believes it is responsible for feeding every school child in the state. Now, presumably, you do that to not shame some kids. Certain kids, yeah. sure, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Side note, um, he resumed teaching as a geography teacher and football coach at Mankato West High School. I see. Lower and middle-income parents would have better access to child care and preschool. Walls wants to create a new state agency. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, funding, Joe, for K-12 through education in Minnesota yeah. totals $14,404,670,000. So now with this, this would push it up to $26 billion. Yeah, Well, that's 14 over what? Four years, you said? So you yeah. only had yeah. three per year. So $17 billion yeah. per yeah. year. Almost so 18. With, with a B. Walls, with a B, yes. Yeah, okay. Walls also wants to create a new state agency 
the Department of Children, Youth, and Families. It sounds terribly redundant to me. Yes. Which would oversee some aspects of state government now under the purview of the Department of Human Services. Lieutenant Governor Peggy Flanagan said the measures would cut the rate of child poverty in the state by 25 percent. Uh, hold reading, on. Hold on. Uh, we don't <coughs> know that. I'm reading from the uh, Pioneer Press. Mm. Growing up in a, am I close enough to the microphone? You are. Thank you. Growing up in a low-income family, Flanagan called the budget plan something she's been waiting my whole life to roll out. Mm-hmm. Wow. I, I don't wish to be uncharitable to Peggy Flanagan, who I believe is a First Nation, Native she is. American. She is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but most people, Peggy, what they wait for their whole life is to make it on their own. This quote seems to suggest you've been waiting your whole life for, the, for a government handout. I'm coming up to the calm part. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's my favorite part. Is Walls blind yes. to the fact that creating a new state agency goes against the grain of everything most reasonable people would stand for, even in this state? Yes. Here's the calm part. Okay. Governor, you wish to, uh, over the next few years, you wish to spend an additional $12 billion dollars on families and their kids to make Minnesota the best in the country for kids. Well, uh, A, there is no way to measure that. So that means then there is no way to track the success of the money. And B, you owe us, I believe, in a gesture of goodwill, you owe us an explanation (coughs) for how you have come to the conclusion that money equals success in education. For there is no study that I'm aware of, and sir, if you have one, I would love you to point it out. There is no study linking money spent to academic achievement. In fact, our basic scores continue to decline. For all you've done, all you Democrats have done, over the years, we were on to this 25 years ago in the radio. We hear every single year we must spend more on education. And with every passing year, the schools have only declined. The threats of violence have only increased. The uh, I'll stick to my calmness. Mm-hmm. There you go. You caught yourself. Governor... The people of Minnesota are entirely reasonable in having you explain to us why and how you think this will work. Because, and I say this calmly, it won't. It never has before. And what do you do when you exhaust the $24 billion you intend to spend? Must that become $48 billion to result in the same result? It's a great question. Where are we going here, sir? Yep. <clears throat> yeah, you in the back. Former guest of Garage Logic. Yeah. And former school teacher, I believe, in the St. Paul public school system, mm-hmm. Rashad Turner, mm-hmm. tweeted this yesterday. Mm-hmm. The Minneapolis and St. Paul school districts spend over $18,000 per student. What do we get for those dollars? Question mark. Minneapolis public schools. 82% of black students can't read at grade level. Mm-hmm. 80% of Hispanic students can't read at grade level. 78% of American Indian students can't read at grade level. I need help here. 80% of FRL students can't read at grade level, and 10% of students drop out. That's just Minneapolis. St. Paul, it's very similar. 80% of black, 70%
of Hispanic, 72 of American Indian, and uh, FRL students. And the question to ask is, how will spending an additional $12 billion remedy that? And the answer is, it can't and it won't. Including enrollment numbers continue to plummet. FRL is free or reduced price lunch. Gotcha. gotcha. Okay, thank you, Johnny. For real? <laughs> I have nowhere to go with this because I'm at the end of the road. Uh, we're held captive by a corrupted ideology, uh, by people who believe they're entitled to take our money and, unfortunately, waste it. Uh, the people who need to be turned around or at least have their eyes open are the people who live in Liberal Lakes, Euphoria, and Diversityville. Think what you want about life. People in Liberal Lakes, Euphoria, and Diversityville have your own world view, uh, and which may very well be different than a GLers, but nevertheless certainly entitled to it. But how can you, with any degree of rationality, agree that spending $12 billion more on top of $14 billion already spent will make uh, this the best kid for states, a best state for kids in the country? Uh, you have to be serious with yourselves, and you have to wonder, what can that possibly mean? How can that possibly me be measured? And if it can't be measured, then it, it's a failure. If it can't be measured, then you are subjected to a future of this continuing B as in B. 82%. That, that's startling to me. How do you change that? Yeah. How do you change, do you change that? that? Well, that's that's got to be changed by people who uh, are going to decide to take parenting seriously. Mm -hmm. So you're probably generations away from that. I mean, you've got a shooting the other month at the Mall of America. The guy shoots somebody in the head. His mom drove him to Georgia. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, you 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 you've got parents that have uh, squandered their opportunity to get little Johnny to read. They've squandered it, and I don't know how many generations. And this shouldn't be an indictment of teachers. No, I don't think shouldn't. a teacher wakes up in the morning and and can't wait to get to school to make sure some kid cannot. But the read. teacher can be as well intended as possible, work as hard as they possibly can. If there's no support under the child's own roof, they've got no shot. And that's why spending this money is so foolhardy. It can't result in correcting. An 82% well, it hasn't reading now. deficiency. What? It never has. No. That's the point. Yep. It never has. But the Minnesota Education Union is terribly powerful. Walls is indebted to them. And he's rewarding them. And he's rewarding them, not anyone involved in the schools. I mean, not any family or child. He's rewarding the union. Hmm. The head of whom, the head of which in Minneapolis wants to fight capitalism. Yeah. Mm. So. We started positive. Pardon? I said we started positive. I'm remaining calm <laughs> uh, because there's really no point in being angry. There's this fellow, uh, Walls, uh, has shown time and again that he's not willing to listen to either anger or reason. Well, that's good because according to everydayhealth.com, an angry outburst puts your heart at great risk. My mm -hmm. blood pressure is fine. Okay, mm -hmm. good, good. Uh, so did you insinuate that some of this money he wants is going to the union? Uh, and uh, and the, the union leader? No, I'm not is, insinuating that uh, at all. I'm insinuating that that this is his payback for their support. Yeah, I'll throw $12 billion more at education. He's not putting it in the pocket of any specific union person. I don't mean that at all. I was really hoping you did. Well, I don't. <laughs> uh, it's just, again, it's new spending on multiple school programs, including general operations, special ed, 
universal meals, mental health services. Lower and middle income parents would have better access to child care and preschool and be eligible for tax credits to offset those costs and other expenses. But most insidiously and most regrettably, Walls wants to create a new state agency, the Department of Children, Youth, and Families. I can't help but feel that he's sticking it to the public with that. He's sticking it to people who know perfectly well that that's foolhardy. Mm -hmm. And he said, I don't care. Look what I, I'm on my second term. I'm going to retire and get about five pensions and live like a king. Uh, Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to leave you with another bureaucracy. The, the, The governor, Governor Walls, you must know, you must understand. I'm convinced you do that. That's meaningless, that it cannot result in what you apparently believe it can result in, and it can't. Sir, I offer you the chance again. Come on this show, present the evidence that money spent transforms academic achievement. Please. I won't say a word. You may have the whole time. Not done that. Mm -hmm. You'll just let us talk. (laughs) We'll be back shortly. Oh, okay. Look at all the fun. Hey, GLers, it's Reavers here, and you've heard me talk about my relationship with Josh Arnold for quite some time now. And the reason I advocate that you give Josh a call is simple. Well, actually, it's two reasons, trust and results. Josh has seen it all when it comes to economic and market conditions. As he says, past results do not guarantee future returns. While that is true, Josh can make sure that your retirement objectives match your investments. And you can trust Josh to make sure that you are not paying more in fees than you are selling in returns. Yes, that is more common than you would think. So do yourself a favor by booking a 48-minute free, yes, free consultation that has absolutely no obligation. Call Josh today at 952-925-5608. That number, once again, is 952-925-5608. You will be glad you did. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Chris Reavers is a paid endorser. This guy wears many hats, just not indoors. Joe Souchere. This is from the Center of the American Experiment. Governor Walls knows monetary inputs will not miraculously produce better results for Minnesota students, but today's announcement, the $12 billion deal, is not about students. It's about adults, specifically putting more money into a broken system without asking for proven reforms, will reward the teachers' union for their support in his re-election campaign at the expense of students. I think I can back up the expense of students. I'm not allowed to do the math. Uh, I'll only trust uh, John Hyde on this one. Oh, Ooh. God. That hurt. The pressure. Per- the, uh, this is back yeah. to the story of Wall's announcement of the money he wants to spend. The per-pupil funding formula, which now costs... $7.4 billion annually, that's out of the $14 billion, would increase by 4% next year and 2% the following year for a total of $717 million. <clears throat> so what percentage of $7.4 billion, uh, the $7.4 billion annually will rise to what? Under the wall's proposal, seven. He's proposing twelve point something new billion. Over what span? Two uh, years, you said. Over uh, what or span? Four. four years, right? Four, four years. years. Four years. So that's so what? Three billion more a year. Yep. yep. So let's say the uh, so the student funding formula will then be ten point four billion annually. All right, you got okay. that. Yeah. What percentage? Sure. What percentage of ten point four billion? Is seven hundred and seventeen million. Uh, okay. Okay. Wait. Oh, what percent? Yeah. Give me the number again. What percentage of seven point four billion is seven hundred and seventeen million? Ten point four billion. Uh, 
Hold on. Because the preponderance. <clears throat> 770, you said, right? 717. 717. Because the preponderance of the money is not going to a student. 14.5%. 14.5% of what he wishes to spend goes to students. So that means 85% is going elsewhere. Hmm. We're getting ripped off. Ah, it's just it's just money, Joe. Why do you hate kids? Yeah. No, the the sad realization is that I love kids and I fear for them mightily. Now, you can say, you know what? Our dad said the same thing back in 1950. Right. Now the world's going to hell. Blah, blah. blah. Uh, no. No, these aren't the Democrats of 1950. These aren't the Republicans of yeah, 1950. <laughs> these are crackpot people. These are people who come to the legislature with a burning desire to make sure the public pays for tampons. <laughs> for men. For men. And most of them just want to be famous. Man, they, don't really want to, they don't want to make law or That's anything. exactly like right, Johnny. They, they, don't, they don't want to serve the public. They just want to be reality stars. Let me mm -hmm. get her out of the way briefly. This is, uh, we're talking about Feist, Sandra yeah. Feist. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. She introduced the menstrual equity bill. Mm -hmm. right. We talked about it yesterday. Hold on a second. <laughs> In fact, all those fathers who said the world are going to hell in 1950, they're now revolving in their tombs. Right. <laughs> because they were right. <laughs> Sandra Feist introduced the menstrual equity bill, which is aimed at providing all students with access to menstrual products. Okay, I, we talked about this yesterday. No need to uh, continue it, but I do have a question. What's your question? Why do we have to pay for somebody's <clears throat> menstrual product? Uh, are, I, we, are we providing them soap and toothpaste? Well, why, why you're providing is this, them soap and toilet paper. Why is this my responsibility? Serious question. Why am I paying for menstrual products, not to mention why should I be paying for them for men? Or as we deduced yesterday, yeah. probably trans people. Mm. Why is that my responsibility? And if you're going to pay for private toiletries... What else, what's going to be introduced three years from now by the likes of this ideologically corrupted Sandra Feist? Yeah, because you've already gone down the road, so... You're calling this one the menstrual equity bill. When are you going to have, what? Uh, I don't, can't even think of anything to compare it to. Well, the argument for the free tampons is that these girls get caught off guard. They don't have any... That's their pros. problem. They didn't plan for it. That's tough. And they're giving away soap and toilet paper, so this is a bathroom item, so they want to give this away, yeah, too. Yeah, but usually they were what, what When are we going to have the Ocular Equity Act, that everyone should have access and the government should pay for you to see an eye doctor and have glasses? Oh, that'd be helpful. I'd like a little, hey, hang on a minute. But you guys wouldn't go to the eye doctor because you just buy cheaters. Anyway. I don't know if that's right. a good analogy. I, I, well, I'm then not you come seeing... up with a better one. Well, there isn't one. There or are braces uh, on your teeth. I mean, it's a body function thing. Uh, so are this... sight. Yeah. But, it, well, I, I think I know where Kenny's going, maybe. It could, well, it could I, be, lead to it, a weird situation if... if well, if no. you started menstruating during eye exam, yeah, that would be oh, well, a situation. Eye exam. Well, that was just that was plainly spelled out in the initial article, so which yeah. So they're wadding, you know. Do you want to get graphic no, about I don't. this or not? I don't. I don't at all. Well, you, you know, it's no. I'll, I'll just it's, stick with this, Kenny. I don't want to pay for it. Okay, Joe, you're not getting many flies, but with using that tone, well, of that voice. Did, more I did vinegar. My voice did rise. Yeah, yeah vinegar <laughs> came out of your mouth. In fact, uh, the second thing on this list is anger can up your stroke risk. <laughs> I don't care. Um, there was a term that I had not heard before, based on our conversation about this yesterday. Mm -hmm. Are you guys familiar with the term? Period poverty. I'm not. No, no. I don't like where that's Period going. Period poverty doesn't just affect women. Two spirits, trans men, non binary people, and genderqueer people can all have periods. And arguably, period poverty may be higher in these populations. Here's why. 
You ever seen a tampon dispenser, a box of free tampons Turn in a men's bathroom? Turn it off. Is that her? No. no. This was somebody else. This was some other psycho. Else. She might as well have been her. Yikes. Period poverty. Yeah. There's a lot going on out there, Joe. Well, Kenny, that brings me back to my point. If, if you're going to, and these idiots that we've elected, they'd, they'd adopt period poverty. I just don't what see else what wouldn't the, they adopt? I don't see what the big deal is giving the girls some tampons and pads. Because you don't see the next step. Well, if yeah, there's but, if there has to be equity in menstrual products, then what shouldn't there be equity in? Well, I'm just thinking of bathroom items. Okay, and these poor girls you're, walking around without the proper. Okay, you're confident that this will be limited to the bathroom. That's fine. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm rooting for you. No, no, you're you're turning my point of view into a political thing. That's this my, whole thing is political. Yeah, but not, isn't not she good. advocating? I for... never went to a school that wasn't all boys, so none of this has any effect on me. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think at at Hill they probably had it. female restrooms for. No, they didn't. They did not just have sink. Well, there might have been one or two. At Creighton, we had, we had both. Yeah, but you were there when it was co-ed. No, that explains was, your whole was the last. Uh, yeah. your whole misogynist persona. That kind of explains <laughs> it. Really does yeah, explains it all. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, let me let me just. I would not deny a girl what she needs to get through. Yes, but she's advocating to put these in men's rooms. But I obviously disagree with that. That's foolish and childish and stupid and okay. lame. Let Isn't me, that the distinction in the argument? She wants to put them in men's rooms. Okay, there's a couple of ways to look at this. One, when you, I, when you have to look at this silliness, is it any surprise that Walls will get away with creating a new department of children and happy thoughts? Two, the only point I'm trying to make, and I don't want to deprive any female of, of protection, the only point that I'm making, I'm not trying to make it, I've made it. I've made it successfully for years because you can see the evidence. If you're going to provide all of these uh, toiletries for men and women, then I guarantee you there's a next step. What won't you be providing public money for? That's all I'm saying. It'll happen. It'll happen as sure as the moon comes out yesterday. Happy cool. birthday, dear Valley. That's no great leap. That's how life works. Yeah, but it's it 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 works fine privately. Mm. When it works publicly, you're paying for it, and nobody bitches about taxes more than you do. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't. Okay, care maybe about that. me. Okay. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Do you want to take a break and come back with John? Actually, Hyde? I wanted to ask, what was he trying? Who was he trying to wish? Br- happy I can't birthday remember. To- it was uh, Kareen. Happy birthday, no, it was Andrea. Dear a- Andrea. 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 Okay, and he was trying to say Andrea. Yeah, and it came out Lally. Lally. Uh, right. Uh, Lally. He wasn't trying to say anything. He just forgot. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there Let's he go is. here. Oh, you want to take a break? Oh, okay. Guess what? It's Positive Thursday. That means Mr. Mike Schoonover is on the line with us. And Positive Thursday brought to us by SchoonoverBodyWorks.com. They're on 1060 County E in Shoreview. And uh, construction going hot and heavy in your area. Man, you're really making progress up there, Mike. We are, Kenny. We are. It's uh, it's really fun to, to see this thing come about and uh, I should probably tell the GLers. Last week we talked a little bit about it that uh, we're we're open for business and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. next week we're going to be forced to uh, shut down for the week because uh, they're going to deliver. There's going to be 50 flatbed trucks delivering walls, as in W A L L S, not W A L Z, and um, Thank you. and roofs. So. So there's going to be uh, it's going to be a major change on the landscape next week, and uh, we just want to keep customers and vendors away because it's going to be kind of chaotic. So um, it must be nice. Know, I, I, working for you, it must be awesome. Uh, employees, uh, you're going to have a week off in January. Enjoy yourself. That's well, so sweet. Well, uh, 
Kenny, they got to make up the time. We got customers, cars. We got to, you know, we we still have cars that need to be fixed. So yeah, but we for a week, in, uh, we got we got to burn the we got to burn the candle this week and then <laughs> the following week, and maybe we'll sneak in there at night next week. We'll see what happens. We just don't know what uh, what to expect at this point. But we just want to make sure everybody's uh, everybody's safe and let those construction dudes do their work. Yeah, you got to get that project done and get moved in. Uh, meanwhile, GLers, if you need anything done as far as auto work goes, give Miss Nikki at Schoonover Body Works a call. She'll set you up, whether it's body work, uh, oil change, tires, repair, anything. They do it all at Schoonover Body Works and Glass in Shoreview and on the web, schoonoverbodyworks.com. Truth, justice, and the Souchere. I bet you wish you had gone to Fratelloni's and got your slush buster this morning. Yeah, you know what it's going to do? It's going to bust some slush on a day like today. Bust it. Have you busted slush yet, Rook? I have not busted slush yet. You got to get a slush buster. You really do. Uh, They're available at any one of the 21 Fratelloni's Hardware and Garden Stores locations. Also available at Welna Ace Hardware in Robbinsdale. Amazon, you can order it, but just go to their website, slushbuster.us. One of the best inventions we've had in some time here in Garage Logic. And Dave Pounds is the inventor right here, Burnsville, Minnesota. That's where the slush buster was invented, and he's a loyal GLer. And he got tired of all that corrosive slush rusting out his cars and also damaging you know, some of that inter- or the exterior of your vehicle. So go online, slushbuster.us. Get that slush buster for you, for maybe for Do somebody it. as a gift. What have you? Uh, go go get that slush buster today, and you know what? You still got a lot what of what have you. <laughs> you know what what have you? I was trying to pull up my copy as I was trying I to knew talk. It was a verbal crutch. You know, it was one of those odd yes. segues Rook. and such. But uh, anyway, uh, Dave's a loyal G other, so support him and support the slush buster. Please place your order online and tell them that you heard about him here on the Garage Logic podcast. Uh, and such. And such. <laughs> These phonies in Davos, Switzerland, who oh, crap. there's no airport in Davos. They fly to about two and a half hours away in their private jets, and they get helicoptered to Davos. Ah. Then they get in Escalades and are driven to the uh, they, to the um, hotel. Only electric Escalades? No. And and they're all phonies, and they... Al Gore gave him a little Elmer Gantry. Jordy said he <clears throat> went Elmer Gantry on him. Okay. And, and Kelsey, Who's Elmer Gantry? Kelsey was sent me something oh, and gave boy. me the... Uh, don't. Oh, Jesus. Don't okay, Jesus. you guys, you have to understand... Don't, no, that. don't even bother explaining to him. <laughs> Look it up. Just, just let it go. Jesus Elmer Christ. Fudd. Gantry. Elmer <laughs> Fudd. Al Gore went Elmer Gantry on these people. At the World Economic Forum. And he actually said that they were a select group of human beings. Brought together, brought together. This is John Kerry. I'm sorry, not Gore. I'll get to Gore in a moment. This is uh, the climate czar, John Kerry, who said, We are a select group of human beings brought together by an extraterrestrial force to save the planet. Wow. When you stop to think about it, it's pretty extraordinary that we that we select a group of human beings because of whatever touched us at some point in our lives are able to sit in a room and come together and actually talk about saving the planet, hmm. Kerry said. He's a megalomaniac. Uh, he thanked the president of the World Economic Forum for getting him the best room I've had here in 35 years. <laughs> According to the Daily Mail, what? according to the Daily Mail, over the last 15 months, Kerry flew more than 180,000 miles on flights that emitted more than 9.5 million pounds of carbon, roughly 300 times the average American. That's according to a Washington Free Beacon analysis. But he also married that uh, heiress, didn't he? The Heinz woman, Teresa. Teresa. Yes. Teresa Heinz. Yes, she goes like this. And she's got a fortune. They got planes. They can get anywhere they want. Well, also speaking in Davos was Al Gore, hmm. who went nuts. It sounds like they're all going nuts. Yeah. You ready for that, Chrissy? Yeah. You want it right now? Yeah. 
of the land and creating the droughts and melting the ice and raising the sea level and causing these waves of climate refugees predicted to reach one billion in this century. Look at the xenophobia and political authoritarian trends that have come from just a few million refugees. What about a billion? We would lose our capacity for self-governance on this world. We have to act. So in answer to your question, I would say we have to have a sense of urgency much greater than we have yet had and we need have had and we need to make some changes of the land and creating the droughts. Jesus, I'm, Stop I'm, that. I'm seriously going to leave. Uh, Aren't you kidding my emails? <laughs> <laughs> Can't you turn it off? Why would you answer my emails? Stop. <clears throat> That's uh, it's not Reaver's fault. He's getting emails. He. There must be a way, given the fact that we we have technology and stuff and, and stuff. The, there must be a way to stop that noise. There is. Do you know what it is? Yes. Yeah. Close what? your email program. It's not. That's a, a good point. It's, during it's, during it's while not. you're playing the Gore audio, for example, can you turn off email? It's not my email, gentlemen. What is it? It's a it's a big giant batch of don't effing worry about it. Right no, now. I am worried about it because no. it's ruining the show. It was a, a different program. It's off now. So. A different program. Would you, would you like to hear the Al Gore soundbite again without interruption? Because I could play it again because I shut it off. Wait a minute. It was your fault then. You had it on. <laughs> Do you want the explanation? There's a recording mechanism that I use on this computer Pretty that records good. the show Thank you. every single day. And then when I save the show... It captures that because I have to even out all of the levels because people bitch because Kenny's mic is too hot, John's mic is too low, and we're in the studio. I understand. Sometimes if I don't mute that at the beginning of the show, it will send feedback just like it did there because I was playing a separate piece of audio from the same computer. Giving you a bit of a report. Right. I understand. Chris. Notifying me that I'm playing some. Thank you, sir. Of the land and creating the droughts and melting the ice and raising the sea level and causing these waves of climate refugees predicted to reach one billion in this century. Look at the xenophobia and political authoritarian trends that have come from just a few million refugees. What about a billion? We would lose our capacity for self-governance on this world. We have to act. So in answer to your question, I would say we have to have a sense of urgency much greater than we have yet had, and we need have had, and we need to make huh? some change. Wow, where's the boiling oceans? And I thought he's, we were going to hear him say the yeah, words "boiling he's oceans." And he's completely he's insane. insane. I think he's mentally ill. That's how Ill. he started. Was with boiling oceans. That's oh, I didn't hear that part. It's because yeah. we, you know, we had some more sound bites. <laughs> Well, the likes of Al Gore, again, are going to get away with this until they don't. What we have to hope for is that there is an until they don't. Because he is certifiably crazy. Yes. So is Kerry. Kerry to the point where he believes he's been touched at some moment in his life, perhaps by a, an Jeez. extra terrestrial force. Maybe Carrie will be on aliens, can he? Maybe he is an alien. Maybe he is an alien. Uh, Released by. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Al started again. I, I needed to cut him off. But to, to blame xenophobia on climate change, that's a leap, man. Well, what can Gore's endgame possibly be? He's already enriched himself through this scam. So what. What is he up to? He's got to pay it forward to the next generation of hacks. He and, he and John Kerry lead lives that only nine-tenths of nine-tenths of one percent of all people on earth lead. Uh, how can they possibly be, be lecturing us? They're uh, miraculously and, still on the third rail. Yeah. They managed to hold on. Yeah. But these frauds get together in Davos, and they're going to, they're going to plot our future because they know best. And uh, I see where Governor, not Governor, I wish, I see where President Biden is going to view, uh, going to California, 
and view, view the flood damage. Sure. Mm-hmm. And you know that from that will come his boilerplate uh, meanderings about climate change. I just hope that someone covering that in California, and I, I really fear that this will not happen, will any network television reporter covering that, will anyone from the Los Angeles Times covering the presidential visit, will anyone bring up the 45-day storm and flood in 1861? I bet not. From 1861 <clears throat> to late January of 1862. You're assuming they know about it or even care about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess that's my point. I, I don't think they're taking any of that context into consideration. No. These, these episodes of terrible weather in California fit the agenda too neatly. Did you, and and they, they don't understand that this is cyclical and it's happened. Although I will notice this. There's been not many paragraphs lately. I think many Californians are shutting up and damn happy the reservoirs are full again. Right. Did you see the Daily Mail's piece on Al Gore today? I didn't read it, of course, but I know it was Basically explaining there. how he has turned this climate activism nonsense into a... Three hundred and thirty million dollar empire. Oh yeah, he's well, benefited. Sure. He's benefited tremendously from from this. He's selling carbon offsets. He's Elmer Gantry. Yeah, good old Elmer. Did you look him up? I did. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice. That book. was the Sinclair Lewis book, right? Elmer Gantry yeah. was drunk. Yeah. <clears throat> That's the yeah. first line, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Lewis finished the book while mending a broken leg on Jackfish Island. In Rainy Lake, Minnesota. Really? Yes. Mm-hmm. So you now know more about Elmer Gantry than I do. No, I don't. I didn't read the book. You could use the Music Man as a as a <laughs> template for what they're doing. Well, everybody has no comment about Gore, so let's move on and have John Heights newscast. <laughs> Hi, well, Johnny. Just, all I know is you went nuts. He's nuts. He sounded Who's nuts? pretty nuts. Pretty. Yeah, nuts. he really. He didn't sound like the old. Al Gore, did he? He sounded no. different. He sounded demented. Thicker. Yeah. He makes two million dollars a month. It sounded from this like investment firm. He huh. just snarfed up a big fat rail of blow. <laughs> yeah. That's what it sounded like. Just came out of the men's room. And- we got to score some more. We're almost out. Four <laughs> years after losing to George W. Bush in 2000, Gore set up Generation Investment Management with former Goldman Sachs managing director and close friend David Blood. The mission statement of the investment firm, where Gore collects $2 million in a monthly salary, is to back companies that are making strides toward going green. The firm is worth around $36 billion. Ooh. Well, he's done well. Yikes. Yeah. He's done well. You want to take a break or just go to Johnny? Let's just go to John. Johnny Height Newscast. Thank you, Joe. The saga of St. Paul Streets continues. The city of St. Paul has now canceled north-south residential <laughs> plowing operations for today and tomorrow because of the snow we're getting. Wow. Well, wouldn't that be a reason to do it? Right. Keep her uh, going is- there, guys. This announcement comes after two days of not quite hitting plowing goals. The city plowed Tuesday two-thirds of its planned east-west routes, and Wednesday the city plowed 85% of its planned east-west routes. Uh, The city said there were some streets that saw a noticeable difference with the plowing efforts and others that didn't see much of an improvement due to hardened ice pack that was challenging the move. All of that came last night from the city in an update at 6 p.m. This is right up there with uh, outward bound classes canceled, too cold. Right, right. Snow plowing canceled. It's snowing. It's too much snow. (laughs) Speaking of St. Paul, Grand Old Day is coming back. It'll return this this summer. One day you get you get arrested if you're over thirty and you go to Grand Old Days. You should get arrested. You're you're just put in jail. Creepy factors. Just put in jail. The One Day Street Festival is set for Sunday, June 4th. This will be the first time the event will happen since 2019. It was canceled due to the pandemic in 2020. It was supposed to come back in 2021, but it was later canceled by the organizers who also preemptively canceled the 2022 event as well. Police in Kentucky have arrested a savage Minnesota couple accused of kidnapping their seven-week-old infant amid an investigation into possible child abuse. 
According to an arrest warrant, the parents, 28-year-old Zachariah Whitehead and 29-year-old Amanda Womack, brought their child to a hospital emergency room in Scott County with a fractured arm on Thursday. They said the child was wiggly and that the injury might have happened while changing clothes. Hospital staff reported the injury to Scott County Child Protection, who wanted the baby placed in the care of a family member while they conducted tests and interviews to figure out how the child got hurt. Whitehead and Womack allegedly protested and were very upset at the prospect of their baby being placed in someone else's care. They also told authorities they were sovereign citizens who disagreed with the law. Regardless, the child's grandmother assumed care of the baby, and the parents were barred from staying at the grandmom's home. But this past Tuesday, Child Protection notified the Savage Police Department that the grandmother, Whitehead, and Womack were not answering phones. Police visited the grandmother's home and found out the parents had left with the child on Monday and that the grandmother had, quote, rescinded her role as caregiver. She did not agree with it. Using cell phone data, they were tracked to Lexington, Kentucky, Local law enforcement, upon getting a tip from the Savage Police Department, confirmed the couple was inside a home. They refused to come outside. A crisis negotiation team was brought in to coax them out. That lasted about six hours before they finally came out. Wow. The baby was recovered safely and is in protective custody, according to police. What a mess. Star Tribune, Star Tribune reporting crime reports related to Metro Transit's trains and buses increased by 54% in 2022. Over the number of the previous year, narcotics and weapons complaints soared by 182% and 145% respectively, and liquor law violations rose by 92%. Metro Transit Interim Police Chief Rick Great says this is still very much a learning experience for us and called it eye-opening. The data shared with members of the Met Council's Committee of the Whole reinforced the argument that Metro Transit's crime-fighting efforts are more of a long-term endeavor than a quick fix, but officials said they were confident the action plan they adopted last summer can ensure the safety of public transportation in the Twin Cities. That has to impact Twins' attendance. It yes. does. Yes. Think about this, too. Two things that should also stand out about what the story that John just read. Mm -hmm. A lot of the crime that goes on, especially on light rail, oftentimes goes unreported. And the no. second thing is, while uh, the crime figures were up basically double, r ridership is down significantly. So that's just how bad it is. Yeah. In other words, you're saying even with fewer people on the train, the crime is, the crime is increasing. Yes, because the people on the trains are of a criminal element. And sometimes when someone either gets pickpocketed or whatever, they're just like, well, to hell with it. They don't even report it. Mm -hmm. yep. It's a nice little program you got there, Joe. That's not mine. Nearly a week after a fatal shooting at a Minneapolis homeless encampment, officials have cleared the area out. A spokesperson for the Minnesota Department of Transportation confirming that it, with the help from Minneapolis, Metro Transit, and Minnesota State Patrol, cleared out the encampment in the city's Cedar Riverside neighborhood. The department said the spot had become what they called a critical safety concern following the shooting last week. Just before 6.30 a.m. last Thursday, police were called to the area, found an unconscious man suffering from a gunshot wound. Officers rendered aid until the man was taken to a hospital where he was later died. He was identified as 27-year-old Adnan Muhammad Ali. State officials had confirmed their plans to shut down the camp last week, but didn't provide a timeline. MnDOT said it worked with local officials to provide support and alternatives for people at the site. and added that service providers and organizations have made regular visits there over the past several weeks to share information about shelters. Did I uh, finish up my uh, Booker Hodges thoughts yesterday? Remember we uh, talked you about Booker, the but I don't know that you fit. I don't know police chief of Bloomington, a straight talker. Did I did I say on the air that uh, what I was thinking? Yes. That he th he says the things I wish Melvin Carter would say. Did I say that on the air? No, you, you said, said that it now. Here. You said it now. So, yeah. Well, I keep going back to that one incident when Melvin UPS. was first elected, and there was a teenage girl acting yeah. like a two-year-old in a what a telephone store mm -hmm. uh, on Hamlin and University. Yes, and mm -hmm. she was carrying on something fierce, and the police came in, and we all saw the video. The police handled it as correctly as they could possibly handle it. And the first thing Carter did was condemn the police. Right. Yep. And I, it was my fond hope 
that that a that that wouldn't have happened, and b that he would have taken the girl by her earlobe and dragged her to her parents' house, knocked on the door, and said, "Are you really going to put up with this kind of behavior from your daughter?" And that I I just can't help but feel that would have gone such a long yeah. way into opening people's eyes, and I guess that's what I feel about Booker Hodges that he wouldn't that he would have done that, because yeah. he keeps talking about. You, you gangbangers are nuts. You've got to be better than this. You're crazy. And he's not blaming. Of course, he is a policeman. Uh, but that, that was how I wanted to finish my thought on uh, Booker Hodges. Did they ever get back to you? Mm-mm. I'll call him. Okay. The countdown toward a possible U.S. government default began today with Treasury implementing accounting measures as a stopgap while friction between President Biden and House Republicans raises alarms about whether the U.S. can sidestep the potential economic crisis. The Treasury Department said in a letter to congressional leaders it started taking what it's calling extraordinary measures as the government has run up against its legal borrowing capacity of $31.38 trillion. An artificially imposed cap, the debt ceiling, has been increased roughly 80 times since the 1960s. President Biden and House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy have several months to reach agreement as the department imposes those measures to keep the government operating until at least June. But years of intensifying partisan hostility have led to a conflicting set of demands that jeopardize the ability of the lawmakers to work together on one of their, uh, if you'll pardon my editorializing here, uh, main duties. The debt ceiling has continued to rise in the past eight years by almost $8 trillion under President Trump, with the GOP tax cut causing about $3 trillion of that. Economists say legislation passed so far during the Biden administration should add about $4.8 trillion to the debt ceiling in the next eight years. Hmm. Wait, Meanwhile, wait a minute. Read that last sentence again, Johnny. Wow. Which, which part? Uh by almost $8 trillion under President Trump, with the GOP tax cut causing about $3 trillion of that, economists say legislation passed so far during the Biden administration should add about four point eight to the debt ceiling in the next eight years. Uh, you know what this is the equivalent wow. of, gentlemen? Your kid's off at college. You give them a credit card, hey, uh, this is for emergencies, you know, just be, be smart, be safe, blah, blah, blah. Uh, hey, Dad, I, I I rang up about nine grand on this card. Can you increase my limit? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. That's exactly what this is. Well, it's not only exactly like it is, but we were talking off the air. I, I look around and I find no one from either party who I trust to get a handle on this. Uh, it seems like it's all going to fly apart at any moment. You can't have debt like this. I mean, at some point, we're going to need Jack Prescott to come in here and declare bankruptcy. <laughs> the Republicans, to me, uh, are oh. as much of a disappointment as the Democrats appointing these fruitcakes to committees like Marjorie Taylor Greene and yeah, that lying uh, Santos. Uh, Santos. There's no excuse yeah. for that. They're not just, helping. Just pathetic. Well, what's sad is uh, that story about the debt basically is controlled by those 20 legislators mm-hmm. uh, because they, they told McCarthy, yeah, we'll get you elected House Speaker if you let us deal with this. So it's going to be a well, knockdown. They're not trustworthy right people. No, it's going to oh. be horrible. Did you know, according to everydayhealth.com, number four on this list, that <laughs> anger problems can make your anxiety worse? I don't have any. This show did no. start out positive at one we point. Did. At we did. We did. Beginning. At least a minute and a half, we were positive. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, one of the other things that... Uh, you know that Positive Thursday show? You can take that and put it where the sun goes. <laughs> <don't get> <laughs> wow. Well, I guess wow. that took care of that. Yeah. Thanks, you are Mike. A bitter, bitter man. Yeah. <laughs> The uh, other part of the uh, thing here, uh, his promises, uh, <laughs> Kevin McCarthy, uh, he uh, promised them they'd get a vote on a jumbo-sized national sales tax yep. to get rid of income tax, which I, I don't know how that would work, but apparently it'd be up to a 30% national Jeez. sales tax. Well, they items. poor people cannot afford that. Yeah, well, and that's... I can't afford it. They're getting pushback from Republicans on this, even though it's the Republicans that are proposing the idea. It's already being attacked by Democrats, too, obviously. And Grover Norquist, the dean of D.C. anti-tax activist, said it's a political gift to Biden and the Democrats if they move forward to that. Uh, with that, excuse me, uh, this idea was it's called a fair tax. It would replace the current IRS code with a single sales tax. It was popularized on conservative talk radio back in the late 1990s. It's kicked around Washington ever since then, popping up in an occasional <laughs> presidential platform, but never got a vote. But now, apparently, 
uh, as uh, one of the uh, parts of his becoming deal, his deal to become House Speaker, Kevin McCarthy promised the party's conservative hardliners that they would take a vote on it. Is so, it true that the yeah. inca- uh, income tax started as a means to pay for the Civil War? Uh, I don't know that. I'm believe, on it. I believe that's how it started. Okay. Microsoft became the latest addition yesterday to a growing list of big tech companies who have announced plans to lay off employees. They'll lay off 10,000 workers, according to Satya Nadella, Microsoft's chief executive. Uh, Microsoft employs about 221,000 workers, so the global cuts amount to about 4.5% of the global workforce. With the cuts, Microsoft joins a string of other tech giants who pulled back after several years of frenetic hiring to meet the pandemic-fueled surge in online services. And you will get an in-depth report on that very subject with Mr. Money Talk at the end of the show. Joe, in 1862, President Lincoln signed into law a revenue-raising measure to help pay for Civil War expenses. Mm -hmm. The measure created a commissioner of internal revenue and the nation's first income tax. It levied a 3% tax on incomes between $600 and $10,000, and a 5% tax on incomes of more than $10,000. Oh, boy. Well, that's how it started. It's it's gone up a bit since then. Yeah, I think it's higher than that (laughs) now. (laughs) Alec Baldwin and armorer Hannah Gutierrez-Reed will face criminal charges for that fatal shooting on the set of the film Rust. That was announced this morning, close to 16 months after Baldwin took the life of uh, Hutchins, Helena Hutchins, cinematographer, and wounded the movie's director with a loaded gun on the set. The charges uh, will move forward. They'll be filed by the end of the month. Baldwin and Gutierrez-Reed will each be charged with two counts of involuntary manslaughter, heading toward a hearing before a state judge and then a jury trial. The first charge is a fourth-degree felony, sentencing of up to 18 months in jail and a $5,000 fine. The second charge, formerly an involuntary manslaughter in the commission of a lawful act charge, is also a fourth-degree felony, punishable by up to 18 months in jail and up to a $5,000 fine. Well, John, uh, what else do you got? Well, let me, I, I let me, I got a music one. So I'd let's like that. I love your music ones. We, we have the inductees for this year's class into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Okay, we don't, announced. we don't carry on with this one the way we do with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. What are we getting no, into? It? No, I'll, I'll just let you know who they are. I believe yeah. that was uh, an instruction from the mayor. Songwriting, mm. very important, of course, obviously. Sure. Yeah, uh, we have uh, Glenn Ballard, who's been around forever. He's written no! with everyone. No, he's that. That should be a yes. He's he's written with everyone uh, for the last forty years. No, I'll fight you on this one. <laughs> we got we got Snoop Snoop no. Dogg. Uh, oh Calvin, yeah, Calvin Broadus Jr. Of course, is his Snoop is the animal. What is these well, animals? What is the backup animal? on off of that <laughs> s? <laughs> Careful. Uh, we have uh, Sade. Who, uh, yes. Yeah, yes. I love Sade. You hot like Sade. Sade is hot. Hell? Who's I the like, one on the show like that her. called her Sade? Oh, that's, that's probably, probably Tommy Patrick. Who is Sade? Is she related to Shakara? John, yeah. continue. Sweetest, sweetest taboo. Oh, my God. If you've ever seen the video, song ever, it's, ever. yeah. And Smooth Operator is a great song. Also. Okay, and, okay. And Your Love is King is a great song. Uh, I could go you used on to play to. Sade on this radio show. I love show. Sade. No, she's got more than two hits, Joe. <laughs> uh, also, <laughs> that list, Gloria Estefan. Oh, God. What? I suppose. I, I, I mean, I, I guess. Know. Whatever. Uh, Jeff Lynn. I'm surprised he's not already there. Okay. Yeah. I'll give you that one. He's funny looking. Mystery. He's funny looking. <laughs> Yes. It's funny looking. It's just got curly funny hair. Funny how? Like I'm a clown? What, That's that? the way his hair grows out of his head, John. Yes. So it's well, not discriminate. Yeah. Well, it's curly. I, I didn't say he was funny looking. I did. Teddy Riley. Who's, Who's he? Uh, uh, he's an R&B writer. He's written with uh, stuff for Bobby Brown, Michael Jackson. Uh, no! Uh, other guys. Oh, my God. <laughs> and last but not least, Liz Rose, who's a uh, she's a country a uh, writer. She's written stuff for uh, all sorts of people. Kenny Chesney, Myron Morris. She's written with Taylor Swift, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Thank so you, sir. She's responsible for what has become of the country music industry. I say no yeah. to her. Thank Don't you. Think. We'll be back. In a- well, I'm glad we didn't debate those. Nine. Right. I, I think we should. Let's Nada. Start. Start over. Do what now? Okay. If I tell you. 
Here's a man who spends hours in hardware stores, sifting through the nuts and bolts of life. Joe Suchere. Just Dylan? Yes. Huh? Yeah. Yep. So a guy and his wife were out golfing. <laughs> <laughs> and then? Yeah. And the guy's tee shot landed behind a tree. Oh, no. And just as he was getting ready to chip it back onto the fairway, his wife said, man, you can clear that tree, honey. Go for it. Hmm. The guy says, okay. He swung away. The ball bounced off the tree straight back and hit his wife in the forehead, and she died instantly. Oh, Oops. what are you telling this for on Positive Thursday? Well, a Tough few luck. years later, a few years later, the guy was remarried, and he was out golfing with his new bride. Sure. He teed off, and the ball landed behind a tree. Oh. Just as he was getting ready to chip it back onto the fairway, his wife said, you can clear that tree, honey. Go for yeah, it. Mm. Same thing. And he said, no way. I'm never doing that again. I don't even like to talk about it. Biggest tragedy tragedy in my entire life. I'm never making that horrible mistake again. And the new wife said, oh, my God, honey, I'm sorry. That sounds terrible. What happened? The guy said, I ended up taking an eight. <laughs> <laughs> see? Uh, she's sorry. not dead. I'm just you kidding. know, I did not see that one coming. <laughs> I so didn't either. I was, I was just surprised. blindsided oh. by that one. <laughs> Surprise ending. That sounded like hyperbole. And, uh, almost no, like I just wanted the, you to meet some friends. <laughs> Greg it's almost wants like to... the joke, the aristocrats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Greg wants to correct us. Hello again. When I heard the story on the show about the man in the mall being allegedly singled out and kicked out of the mall for wearing a Jesus Save shirt, I must admit I disagree with the position on the show. You noted that only Alpha News seemed to be covering the story, as well as Glenn Beck's outlet, The Blaze. Reading the coverage of those two sites, it was clear to me that they had a fairly obvious tone and bent to their coverage, which is singling out one aspect of the story and conveniently forgetting key information, which is important. The attached Snopes article explains these points. First off, the outlets neglected to mention the obverse of the shirt, which crossed out the phrase, coexist and replace it with the not-so-subtle Jesus is the only way. The man also said in the video that he wasn't preaching, but the stories did not mention that he had been given multiple notices and warnings from the mall numerous times for soliciting. Mm. More specifically, he had been to the mall several times, handing out gospel tracts, and absurdly claimed that he alone could have prevented the most recent shooting there by proselytizing to the suspects. Is this the kind of guy we want to throw our support behind? I certainly hope not. Please wait to look at the facts before immediately taking a stance on a story. It doesn't seem very GL to me. Good luck, Greg. All right. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. We mentioned the T-shirt. Crossed the, out, yeah. In the crossed yeah, out portion. Yeah, but we didn't talk about it in depth until we were done recording but when I said the same thing that he just said there in the email. Really? We didn't do it reasoning. on the air? No, we did it afterwards oh, as the reasoning that the mall might have. Uh, Only issues. because so they... the town council got exclusive coverage again. That's very good, Rook. They yeah. got their money's yes. worth. Yep. Only because they come to us all the way from Marleth Park in Mpumalanga, South Africa, from the traveling Lymans at WorldwideWafties.com. It was on this day. January 19th. In 1836. Six students attended the opening of the Lake Harriet Mission School for the Dakota, founded by the Reverend Jebediah D. Stevens. The school was sponsored by the Presbyterian Missions Board and taught by the founder's niece, Lucy Stevens, in a cabin built by Gideon H. and Samuel W. Pond. Hmm. On That's this nice. day in 1862... January 19th. Seeing battle for the first time and suffering 45 casualties, the 2nd Minnesota Regiment played a key role in the Union victory at Logan's Crossroads, Kentucky. Hmm. Why should Minnesota, who sent young men to die in the Civil War and never was a slavery state, why should there be any reparation talk at all in this state? There shouldn't. Outright. On this day in 1928, 119. Danan Katagiri Roshi was born in Osaka, Japan. A Zen Buddhist abbot and teacher, Roshi moved to Minnesota in December of 1972 and found the Minnesota Zen Meditation Center located in Minneapolis near Lake Calhoun. Hmm. I'm not saying bidet make a ska. Mm -hmm. 
I will. That's your prerogative. Yeah. And finally, on this day in 1935. Uh, I believe today, Joe, is January 19th. Hey. Well, that's the sound of what you mean. My God. <laughs> what? <laughs> what, just, what just happened? What was that? Yeah. Natalie <laughs> Tippy Hedron. Tippy, yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tippy Hedron. <laughs> Tippy, you two are a regular Abbott and Costello. Natalie Tippy Hedron, wow. who later starred in the Alfred, Alfred Hitchcock movie The Birds, was born where? In um, Elk River, Minnesota. No, Faribault. New, New New Falls, Ulm. Kenny. Cannon New Falls. Ulm. New Ulm, but John, you New looked Ulm. it up, so if you don't count. You don't. I did look it up here. Right? I'm you New Ulm. Tippy Hedron. New Ulm. Good looking gal. Yes, New Ulm. You know, wow. the the face that you made to <laughs> Rookie to simulate that noise, it looked like Joe said, have a stroke. Look I like think he was, <laughs> was he choking. Yeah, I'll, I'll call that's, an ambulance, but I'm not giving you mouth to mouth. How about a bambulance? Oh. Oh. I don't know what. Is he making him? <laughs> Something in his teeth? You flirting with oh me? What is he doing? Oh, my God, help me. No, it was just for real. Wow. <laughs> Joe, Joe, now you make the sound. You make the sound. No, don't make that sound. Oh my God! God are you it's like you're gargling. Oh Tippy's, turning over. <laughs> Tippy's turning over in her grave right now. Is gonna... t- I think Tippy's still with us. John, uh, I'm looking right now. You're just about to hit the out. While you're, uh, she is still alive at age 93. I'm sorry, Tippy. I did not mean to uh, kill you off. Like, kill you off. Who, who was she with in, in uh, the birds? Who was the uh, Suzanne Plachet? Yeah, Suzanne Plachet. Oh, I was always a Suzanne, Suzanne Plachet fan. She had the yeah. great I, raspy I voice. Yeah. I love Suzanne yeah, I love Plachet. Suzanne Plachet. Was she married to Bob Newhart in the show? No, they were, well, yes, I mean, on, on the, the show. show. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but not in real life. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, a Kawasaki? Now he's doing the Mexican hat dance now is what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube, Facebook, oh, yeah. Instagram, uh, do it all. Down or council. don't, I don't Spread care. Spread the word. And all those GLers that said hello to me at the airport, thank you for listening to the podcast. Appreciate it. Are you Here's the rookie? airport cha today. Steve, the wallpaper guy. A couple I met going through security. Bill. Time once again to check in with our guy, Mr. Money Talk. Josh Arnold is with us once again here in Garage Logic, and now's the time for you to do the same. So pick up the phone and make that call for that free 48 minute financial consultation by dialing 952 925 5608. That number, once again, is 952 925 5608. You call that number, you get Josh, and you're always going to get straight talk. You're never going to get sugar coated advice. And Josh is on the line once again here in Garage Logic. And Josh, Today, you would like to touch on market reversal. Yes, I would, because the first few weeks of the opening of 2023, overall, the stock market measured by the Dow, the S&P, and NASDAQ were positive. And that's despite some of the issues that, to me, are known. But some days, the market uh, takes them to heart. Other days, not so much. And I did say we are now entering the period where micro news could overshadow macro news. Micro meaning corporate earnings that are coming out, overshadowing macro news, that being the concerns about the Federal Reserve and interest rate and the direction not only of the U.S. economy, but the worldwide economy. On top of that, this week we have the, we'll call it the elite, the CEOs and presidents of banks around the world, leading hedge fund managers, leading government officials, all meeting in Davos, Switzerland and the financial news media reporting on their utterances. But yesterday, after a very strong start to the market, on what looked to be very positive earnings announcements, about mid-morning, an interview with a bearish investment strategist, Mike Wilson of Morgan Stanley, said, take the money and run. Not going to be a good year. Any bounce is a bear market bounce. Take your profits and go. Things aren't going to get better until the Fed stops raising interest rates, and it looks like they're going to continue raising interest rates. Shortly after his speech on CNBC, or his comments on CNBC, a series 
three, three Fed governors came out and said, yep, inflation is coming down, but we're going to go higher for longer. We want to make sure the inflation number is killed. We still are looking at a 2% target rate. And late yesterday, we had another Fed speaker coming out and said, doesn't look like we're going to hit that 2% target rate until 2025. This morning, well, we had more Fed speak and more of the same, higher for longer. And the market sold off on that, plus Procter & Gamble's earnings announcements, which in my estimation was not stellar. Procter & Gamble's earnings came in down year over year. Their sales were in line with estimates. And Procter & Gamble said, yes, we're looking forward to a better year. They're saying they're going to have to raise prices to keep profits. Well, that, that, folks, is inflation right there. Procter & Gamble raising prices on products of necessity in order to keep their profits. How about sell more at lower prices? you'll get the, the same the same thing. That said, Procter & Gamble does pay a very nice dividend, which is ahead of treasuries, but to me is trading at a very high price to earnings multiple and a high price to sales multiple. And I do focus in on price to sales even more than price to earnings. Now, I compare Procter & Gamble with a very high PE, that being about 27. Yes, it has a very nice dividend, and it is trading at a high price to sales multiple. I compare that with the largest company in the S&P and NASDAQ, and my favorite and largest position in my portfolio, Apple. Apple, which has taken all kinds of hits from analysts and the news media and could take took another hit again today as JP Morgan while remaining overweight the stock cut its price target on concerns about the supply headwinds, which Apple has talked about for the past two quarters, hurting demand. And they cut their numbers prior to Apple's earnings, which will uh, be broadcast February 2nd. But Apple's trading at a price to sales multiple, not much different than Procter & Gamble, and trading at a price to earnings multiple of only uh, 21. And if I were to look at both and say, okay, Procter & Gamble, Gamble is consumer staple. You need consumer staples in a recessionary or market slowdown. You may not need an iPhone. Well, I don't know how you might view your iPhone. Yes, you might keep it a little longer, but at some point you are going to replace it. It is a necessity. Don't take my word for it. You could just listen to the Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett, on his views on Apple. My point, Apple is an easy stock to punch at with media saying it's too expensive on a price earnings multiple because it's not growing as fast. Well, I look at a lot of slow growers. We'll say Procter & Gamble as one, and I have a list of others that are trading at much higher price to earnings multiples and are currently revered. Point of all this, diversifying your portfolio does make some sense. But more to the point, take a look at those companies that continue to be in high demand and you'll see over time rising sales and rising earnings and look for companies that are shareholder friendly. And I'll call Apple as one of those. Meantime, all the talking heads are worried about the Federal Reserve over tightening and killing the economy. Well, I've brought that up before, and the folks in Davos right now are more concerned with recession happening this year than they were last year when they are most concerned about climate change. Very good advice, Mr. Money Talk. You heard him, GLers. Now's the time for you to pick up the phone and make that call for that free 48-minute financial consultation by dialing 952-925-5608, a number that will always give you straight talk, and it's never going to give you sugar-coated advice. Josh, once again, thank you so much for the time and the chat. Have a great day, a fantastic weekend, and we'll talk to you again next week. Look forward to it. Thanks. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Chris Reavers is a paid endorser.